So good morning, everybody, and welcome to ART 196, Introduction to Designing Web Graphics for the Fall Semester 2021. Um, today, we're is nearing the end of the semester, and I thought I would add a couple of um, features that are not absolutely necessary, but I think are use could be very useful to all of you um, when you're designing your websites. The first thing that I want to cover this morning, though, is adding favicons to your website. Those are the little icons, I believe I'm pronouncing it right, and that appear in the tabs in your browser to distinguish your website and from others. Um, and it's a form of branding. It oftentimes, it takes the form of a logo. Um, it needs to be very simple and it needs to be able to be read at a very small size. That's the one thing. The other thing that we that I wanted to do today, if we have time, if not, I will cover it next week. And that will be to use a forwarding, forwarding feature if you're using a free um, hosting service and you would like to purchase a domain name from your favorite, I don't know, company. I use godaddy.com. For, to host my website. And I purchased the domain names from GoDaddy. Um, but if you're using Infinity Free and you want to um, have your own personal domain name and have it forwarded to it, I can show you how to do that. So it cuts on cost and it allows you to kind of um, gradually enter into this uh, website you know, business. Um, and see if it's something that you want to continue to do um, without having to spend a whole lot of money initially. So let's start with the favicons. That's a, if, you, if we're looking right here, mine is here and I have one here. And you can see all the others that I have, the open tabs that I have on my website. Um, so how you do that? Um, there's a number of companies that you can go to um, to help you generate the, fa the favicons and it doesn't cost you anything. But the first thing that you need to do is you need to make your logo. So the logo that I have created for the one that I'm using for today's demonstration is this one here, okay? Um, I made it in Photoshop. You can make yours in Adobe Illustrator, any 2D um, image editing program of your choice. It really doesn't make any difference. And there's another one that I have here um, that you can see is when it's viewed at its actual size, 100% is quite small. Okay. So first things first, um, when you're designing your logo, as I said, it needs to be read at a very small size. Mine may be a little bit too complicated, um, but it's fine for demonstration purposes. Um, the other thing that you need to know is that when you are designing it, and if I go to image, image size inside <clears throat> um, Photoshop, that it's quite small. It's 192 by 192 pixels. It just 200 by 200 would be just fine. Teeny tiny, very small at 72 pixels per inch. So as you can see, this is my original Photoshop file. But the one that you will need for the uh, for the favicon to generate it needs to be a, a JPEG or a ping, something like that. So I've generated or I've saved this as a Photoshop file for, file from my original, and I also exported as a ping file. So I'm ready to go. Okay. So let me go back to my website here. So this week in class. So if you're wondering, you know, well, where do I go to generate one of these things? Um, you, the one that I have found that works very nicely here is over on web tools that I've provided for you. It's called Favicon Generator. So if I click here, it sends us to this right here. Now, if you already have a Favicon and you want to check it, you can do that here. Um, you can use um, existing ones that you can use random images and that sort of thing. 
Um, and I would recommend that you generate your own, okay? So if you want to begin creating your own, you have to select your favicon image. And that's the one that I just created. So I'll click here and then hopefully it won't take me too long. And I need to go to my desktop, which is where I've saved it. Uh, there's a desktop and let's go to favicons. I have a favicon folder. Uh, should be here. There we go, favicons. And the one that I picked is the one right here. Let's pick the, the round one, okay? So here's the, the ping file that I generated and I'll go ahead and I'll open it, okay? There we go. So now what it wants you to do <clears throat> is to decide, you know, what kind of, this is a preview of what it's going to look like. So um, background color, um, you can select the default. Um, you can also select the background radius. You can also choose image size. So if you want it, you know, a little bit larger, smaller, um, you can but generally it's kind of limited. So, you know, this is what we're, what I have for default right now. And then you have other options down here. So notice that in most cases, this is going to show up as a round logo, but for the favicon for the iOS web clip, this is what it looks like right here. So you need to, again, select background color. Um, that's what we have here. And then we have for um, um, for uh, let's see the one down here that's Discover Resource, but um, Favicon for Android Chrome, so that's what it looks like here. Okay, um, for Windows, this is what it looks like here. And if you want to change any of these, you can. And you'll notice that the background color right now is this orange. You know, but if I would prefer green, notice how I've changed the background color. So maybe that would be a better choice um, or, you know, select the dark blue or something like that. Um, but that's what it will, it will generate a favicon for you. Okay, um, the next one, let's go ahead and select um, for pin tab settings, touch bar, um, I have kind of a, uh, theme color, which is a, a blue here that I'm using. And then what we want to do is that it says under favicon generator options, um, just use the same place the favicon is. Okay. So what we want to do is generate your favicon with an HTML code. We just click OK. And it's going through the motions now. There we go. So it gives us um, instructions as to what to do with this. We have the download. We're going to go ahead and, and I've already done this, but you download the favicon package, okay, which has all the images that you will need that you just dump into your root folder. And that's it. Then you also have this important information, this code that goes in the head of your document. So you just simply click in here, copy it, and then go and put it in the head of your document. Okay. So you'll have to download the Favicon package. You'll have to copy the code and put it in the head of the page. And then the Favicon package, you need to simply put, you know, once it's uh, extracted, you need to um, put everything inside your root folder. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what I've done here. Mine, I'm gonna to go to Dreamweaver. Okay. So where mine is, you'll see right under here, here's all that code, the link to Apple Touch icon. And these are the sizes, link to um, the, let's see what icon type. 
uh, what do we have others? Manifest, mask icon, MS application, title color, theme, all, the, all of these lines of code are going into the head of the document. You'll notice it here's the closing tag for the head. So it's just before the end of it. And then if you look over to my files over here, I just dumped them all in here. And you can see that there's Android, Android Chrome. There's also an Android Chrome for a larger version that it's saved for me. Here's the Apple Touch icon. Um, and then there's a number of others that are in here, okay? that they have generated for us. Here's the favicon 16 by 16 dot ping. Here's the favicon 32 by 32 ping. Here's the favicon package, entire package that's in here. Okay, and here's the favicon ICO. So I just dumped them all in here. And then you go ahead and sometimes it takes a little bit to, um, uh, a little while for it to actually show up. But if I go back again and I go back to my website, let's go ahead and close that. Um, you can see that it does, it shows up. And I've used a couple of different ones. So that's it. Very short demonstration for that. Okay. So if there are any questions about that, um, you do not, for our class, you do not need to use one, um, but some future date, you might want to embellish your website a little bit and dress it up a tad with a favicon to just distinguish it and, you know, from others when it's open um, and use it as a form of branding for your website, you know, for your, yourself, okay? Now, the other thing is that I want to talk about is I want to show you how to use a forwarding feature that, um, for example, let me go to the very end here. And let's go here, close this one, and we'll use this. So for example, if I put in K Miller online, online.com, it goes to a website that I've created, which is specifically for this class, okay? It's the one we created in Mobi, in Mobi Rise. And if I click here, notice it takes me down to my about, and I can go to the portfolio and I can go to contact us and everything looks just fine now. But when, even though I put in K Miller online as a domain name, You'll notice that when you look up in the, the bar here, that it says art 196 spring 2021.infinityfreeapp.com hyphen, uh, or hot, not hyphen, but backslash um, pound sign next. Now, I don't think I even need the pound sign next, but let's see what we get here. Yeah, but it, it takes me to my website, okay? So I'm not paying for the host. This is the free hosting service that Infinity Free provides. But um, when I give you know, others the domain name of my website, I just simply go to, you know, I, they can put in kmilleronline.com, um, whoops. That's, I misspelled it. kmilleronline.com. It takes us right there. Now, it depends on the hosting service that you want to use, that you're, that, you know, from whom you're going to buy your domain name. Um, I have used GoDaddy for a very long time. And so if I come up, let's see where I have GoDaddy. I believe I put it up here for today, I did. So let me go to GoDaddy. And you can see I've already purchased um, a GoDaddy uh, or from GoDaddy, um, a domain name, the, the K Miller online. Now, 
every time I do this, I have to do some hunting um, because it never, you know, they update their website and they make changes to it. But um, I, the kmart66.com that I use is hosted by GoDaddy. But um, you don't need them to host your website. You don't need 000 website or webhost.com to host your website. Um, if you, um, you don't need infinity free, you can just simply buy a domain name from them. And then whoever is hosting your website, whether it be the free one from infinity or 000 webhost.com, then what you do is that what I've done here is that uh, if I look at all of, uh, I'm gonna use the forward domain down here, the quick links to forward it. And I click down here. Now to find that is not that easy sometimes. You can see that there are all these destinations that I have. And I can come down here and this is where you forward it to any site you want. So anytime I put in came, you know, I would have to go back to the to the website that I had just a moment ago. So let me go ahead and add that. Let's go back again. And I'm gonna put in, because I've already put in the forwarding. Okay, Miller Online. I need to, you know, I would actually copy this from Infinity Free. So I would go ahead and just copy that. But since I've already forwarded, I know where to access it. And now I can come back here. Whoops, let's go back to, no, oh, come on. There we go. I come back to my um, GoDaddy website with the, the host, or it is not the host, but from whom I purchased the domain name and where it says forward to any site, I just command V to paste and then go to next and then just to finish it. And that's it. And it takes a few minutes for it to update and then you are good to go. Now, when I go back to GoDaddy, and you can see that these are all the web, the domain names that I purchased from them. Okay, 934 Gallery, Gallery 934, um, kirkmillerart.com, kmart66.com, and this is what we used for my son. Kmiller Online is the one that I just used. Um, if we go to, let's go to Kirk Miller Art, because I've used forwarding for a couple of them, and I don't remember if that is, um, yeah, let's go to settings. Let's manage folders, let's see what we have. I don't even remember at the moment which ones I've used. I don't need that. So no, I don't. Yeah, I can go back. Let's just stick to what I had planned here. Um. Anyway, if I go back to GoDaddy, go to the home page, and I log in. Okay. Um. Let's go ahead here. I want to. I don't want to find. Yeah. If you want to find a domain, you can. So let's say I wanted to try one. Um, let's say kmart66.com. And let's see if it's available. And it shouldn't be. Now, there's kmart66.net. There's kmart66.xyz. Um, but there's not kmart66.com. These are all the alternatives that they're suggesting. Okay. And you can, there's any number of companies that will allow you to um, um, purchase a domain name. And then once you purchase the domain name and you use the forward, forwarding service of maybe the host that you're using. And again, because I'm using GoDaddy, I use them as a host. Okay, and I use them for my forwarding as well. Um, so now I can go back to the home page again, and I can go to 
you know, here, and I can look at all my products that I, I um, all the websites and domain names that I use with, with GoDaddy. And the one that I was doing just a minute, K Miller Online, I'll click on that domain name. And again, it changes from, I, I don't normally look at this that often, but it, it changes from day to day, from week to week. And you can see right here where it says forward domain, since it's not being hosted by them, it's being hosted by Infinity Free. But if I want people to um, access it using the domain name, then I would have to do that. So that's it. I have um, just covered maybe less than a half an hour today. Um, show you how to um, use the forwarding feature if you don't want to um, actually spend the money on a host, but use a forwarding service and buy the a domain name. Um, and use at the same time, use a free hosting service to gain access to your website through forwarding. And then the other is to, if you want to create a favicon for your website, um, both very easy um, and inexpensive. Typically, domain names cost um, maybe $10, $12 a year. Um, if you have a service host your website, it can be um, $10, $15 a month. So it's not terribly expensive. But again, if you want to test out your website and, and use it maybe as a testing site, um, you can use the free infinity free or 000 web host service and then just forward it, you know, buy a domain name, and use the forwarding and see how you like it. And then if it's working for you, then use any of those um, services to host your website. Okay. So those are the two things that I wanted to show you today. Um, hasn't taken us all that long. So the, the last thing that I want to talk about that I hope everybody will um, view and watch here is that um, next week is our last week of the semester. Um, so everything will be due. Um, you need to publish um, lesson 11 or 12, um, just as you did lesson seven. So I can give you credit for that. And your Dreamweaver website will be due at the end of next week. Okay. The week after that is normally finals week. We don't have a final per se. That's the week that I use to grade um, your projects and to turn in final grades. Okay. I will be sending out an email to all of you as a, I'm sorry, this weekend as a reminder. Okay, that um, everything that, that next week is our final week. I would um, get on the ball and I would work really hard on um, trying to make sure that your, your Dreamweaver website and your Lesson 11 publishes properly and that you don't run into any snags um, because what I was planning on doing next week um, is to to come online here with you. And then if you want, if you need help, I will um, assist you in troubleshooting and make sure that your um, uh, final uh, website, your Dreamweaver website and your lesson 11 is, um, is posted. Um, so let me um, pause my recording. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, just a reminder uh, to, that if you're, even if you're not finished with lesson 12, go ahead and publish lesson 11. Um, that's typically where most students have issues um, publishing their website, that they run into snags, and that um, next week I will be here to help you to try to work through any problems you have. Um, and 
that applies to both your Dreamweaver website and the lesson uh, 11 or 12 that you choose to publish. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye and everybody have a good weekend. Hopefully it won't be too stressful for you and that um, we'll wrap up class next week. Bye-bye.